Okay, so this morning we're gonna get started with setting up our agent website. So back in the fall, uh, Command launched our new agent websites. We're no longer using Playster. So we need to set those up before they'll officially go live. So to get started on setting up your website from the Command home screen, click over here on the consumer applet on the bottom left-hand corner, which is a little icon of a web page. So click on that. It'll default into the landing page tab, but we'll want to click on the agent site pages. So you'll either see, um, you may see this blue bar on your screen that has your URL in it, and then to the right, it says configure your site. Or if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll see where it says configure your site here. Either one of those configure your site buttons is where you want to click on to get started with the Kelly guide. And the Kelly guide is a step-by-step -step process of setting up your website. There's a handful of Kelly guides guides in command. So, um, all right, sorry about that. Um, so to get started, we'll click on configure your site. And then here you want to select, I want to use the new KW agent site. If you select, I have a Placer site, and I want to continue using Placer, or I want to explore other options, you won't be led to set up your website today. So you select, I want to use the new KW agent site and click submit. And this will take us to the Kelly guide. And this will be, it's nice because it literally walks us step by step, everything that we need to do to build our website. So we just click on get started. And then click acknowledge and continue. And here we go. So as we're work, working through the Kelly guide, you'll notice on the left-hand side, left-hand two-thirds of the page, you'll see a preview of what your website looks like and all the changes that you know we make. And then on the left-hand side, um, on the right-hand side, there is um, the place where we edit. So we'll go through and make all the changes to our website. So. Starting at the top, you can see here is my subdomain, so nicholascore.kw.com. You can change that if you want. So over here on the right-hand side, we can select our subdomain. You can just type in whatever you want. It probably defaults to your name or um, whatever your, your URL was uh, with your Placer site, .kw.com. So if you want to change it, you can just type in here, you know, Nicholas Core Atlanta, and then I could click Claim Domain. And it says, congrats, congrats, you've claimed your domain. So it's that simple. I'm going to get rid of Atlanta. Click confirm domain. Perfect. So now I'm back to nicholascore.kw.com. You can make the URL whatever you want. One thing to keep in mind is a lot of agents had a vanity URL. So for myself, I had purchased nicholascore.com through GoDaddy. And with the Placer website, I was able to use that vanity URL. Uh, and have my website appear like it was nicholascore.com. At the moment, our agent websites aren't able to do that. So just keep in mind that as you're putting together um, your subdomain name, that this will be the only URL um, for the site. We'll walk through forwarding in a little bit, but I just wanted to uh, give that preface now. So once we've selected our subdomain, We'll just scroll down the right-hand side and we'll select our marketing profile information. Most of this information will pull in directly from the marketing profile that you set up in command, but this gives us an opportunity to go through, make any edits to it, double check, make sure it's all correct. So we'll just scroll through, first name, last name, market center brokerage, our office information. I always recommend that you have all this information, make sure it's correct. It is required. You can see there's a red asterisk there. But this will make sure that your website is compliant. So anywhere on um, any marketing materials, which is includes a website that you have um, any potential listings or houses, you need to make sure you have your name as well as uh, the brokerage information. So just put all that in there. So make sure you're compliant so you don't get any fines. So scroll down, team or business name. So you can see here I have Nicholas Core Real Estate Group, professional job title, realtor, my email office number. So one thing you'll notice as you, as you play around in command, sometimes 
the phone numbers will include the dashes and sometimes they don't. Here it says excluding dashes or special characters. So just make sure the phone number is correct there. My mobile phone number. And then here's the quick bio that um, I have in my marketing profile. License number. And then for the compliance legal footer, I just have Nicholas Core Realtor with Keller Williams First Atlanta. I just another opportunity to put my name there, but as well as making sure that Keller Williams First Atlanta is included as well. And then market center brokerage license information, phone number. It's pretty basic. I mean, it pulls in all this information from, um, from our marketing profile. Then we have compliance legal footer here. So in some states, they require you to have specific compliance legal footers. We don't have anything in the state of Georgia, so you don't have to put anything here. And then uh, for the legal, legal footer images, if you wanted to add um, a fair housing logo um, or the realtor logo, you could do that here and just click on upload and upload that image there. And you can see here, it provides recommended size of 128 by 48 pixels. Scrolling down, let me mute everyone, all right. I'm um, so scrolling down, so the profile picture, so this is a 360 by 360 image. This should be um, added to your marketing profile, but if you wanna change it here, you can. Same thing with our first Atlanta logo. If you don't have the Market Center logos, um, Check out rawlsgrouphelpdesk.com and Scott, Scott Hardy has uploaded all of the uh, logos to um, there. Let me mute everyone. All right. All right. All right. So just double check your image your logo here, and then if you have a team logo, so if you have either a personal logo for yourself or for um, your team, you can upload that here as well and recommend that it's a 360 by 360 image size. I have a quick question. What is the website again for logos? Oh, it is rawlsgrouphelpdesk.com and I'll, I'll type that here in the, uh, in the chat box. Rawlsgrouphelpdesk.com. And then when you get to rawlsgrouphelpdesk.com, um, there's an icon that says downloads. So you just go there and you select First Atlanta. And it's a whole zip file of all the logos um, with different backgrounds, white, the, the grayscale one as well as full color. So once we've gone through, double checked all of our um, images, all of our marketing profile information, We'll just double check our social media links. So this again has been pulled in from the marketing profile, but you can add it here. So you can add Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, and then your KW app link. So this should auto populate as well. Um, if it doesn't, you can just type in um, like just like google.com for the time being, because it will be a required field. And then we can go back and edit that in a little bit. So we scroll down to the bottom of the page. So we'll click on save and continue. And now we'll just continue to go um, section, by, section by section. So style and theme. So the next thing that we can update is the theme. So we have two options here. We have the red theme and the dark theme. So if you click on it, you can see um, the KW over here in the left-hand corner of the preview changes. I personally just select the red theme. Red is synonymous with KW, so I just keep it so that way that um, that mind share of the red logo is already uh, top of mind for age, or for consumers. Scrolling down, we have our homepage text. So as I scroll down on the preview, you can see it says find your dream home here, but you could type in anything you, um, you want here and it automatically updates at the same time. Start your home search. If you have a, um, a slogan or a saying that you use a lot or um, you use as a part of your marketing material that would make sense here, you can as well. Um, and you can edit it at any time. So I can show you later on how you can go back and quickly make an edit there as well. So scrolling down, we have the option to upload a homepage hero image. 
So here you can see we have this nice image of all the rooftops. There are five images that are included as default with the KW agent uh, website. It rotates through all five of them. If you scroll down over here, you can see here are the five options and it just scrolls through them. If you don't like it, you can click on delete and it will delete it out of the rotation. You can click on preview and it'll show you what it looks like over here on the left hand side. You do have the option of uploading your own hero image. So if you have um, images from any marketing materials or previous listings that you wanna use, you can upload those. It says a recommended size of 1200 by 1200 pixels. One thing to keep in mind here is that before you upload any images, especially of previous listings, make sure you have written permission from the photographer. When we pay a photographer to take pictures of our listings, we are paying to lease that image or those images for the use of advertising that listing. We don't have the rights to use them or most often do not have the rights to use that image in a um, marketing for ourselves as our business. So just make sure that the photographer says, yes, you can use that image on your website. There are tons of images in the designs portion of command. So if you want something extra, you don't like this, you can go through there and you can search all the images and you have access to those copyrights. So you can use it, you don't have to worry about getting in trouble or getting fined. So you just upload your image here and it'll add that into the rotation. And if you only wanted one image to show, you could just delete all the other options that are in the rotation. So just scrolling down. Once we've done all that, we'll just click save and continue. So now we're gonna start working on the site content. The first website, our first page is going to be the company profile. There's a company profile page and there's an about me page that we'll set up in just a moment. Company profile isn't necessary um, or required for every single person. So if you are a solo agent, you may not want a company profile page, um, but if you're a team or you market yourself as a team, so like for myself, I am the Nicholas Core Real Estate Group, which I know will have to change uh, because of the changes in Grec rules. But I would want to create a company profile page to present um, the Nichols Corp real estate team and all of the things that my team is able to do for my clients. Um, I'm sorry, let me just respond to this question. Allie wants to know what the website is. So there you go. RawlsGroupHelpDesk.com. All right, so um, to get started on building the um, company profile page, we'll just start on the right-hand side. Our first option here is to change the navigation. So you can see here, it shows um, the company profile page from the drop-down menu and the live site will be the first option. You can change it around if you want. You can put it anywhere you want. So if you want it to be about me and then company profile, then contact us. You can edit that here and you can also edit it uh, later on as well. The next is gonna be search engine optimization. So this is gonna be the information that we input on your website to help your search engine results, so the organic search. Be mindful that this, these websites are still relatively pretty new, and if you've had a website, a place for a website, or um, maybe uh, through a different CRM that you, that you use, you have months and years of Google searches and Google spiders and Yahoo spiders reading those pages, so those will rank much higher for the time being, but it, assuming that you continue to keep up with your website, you put in all this information, over time, your web page will begin to organically appear at the top of the list. So for page title, it's gonna to default to company profile, um, but you could easily change this to uh, whatever you would like about Nicholas or real estate group, whatever you'd like. And then we have our URL slug, which is going to be um, the URL, so it defaults to about.us, but I could change this to about um, Nicholas, Nicholas 
for real estate group or whatever you'd like. Then SEO description. So this is going to help um, those SEO results. So it's going to let the search engine know exactly what this website is about. So when people are searching, it'll say, oh, this website for Nicholas Core Real Estate Group is one of the most relevant um, sites for this search query. Let's rank this one much higher. So really simple here. Um, I would just recommend putting something in here like your name. Uh, so Nicholas or real estate group with Keller Williams first Atlanta and then put my phone number in there because this is going to be the information um, when a search result appears it's going to have the, bl the blue information that's going to be the URL and then below it is going to be some text that explains what the website is about so I can actually put um, about the Nicholas Core Real Estate Group with Keller Williams First Atlanta so then people know okay this is going to be a company profile page about Nicholas Core Real Estate Group and then we'll click on content so now we'll start actually filling in the information on the page so first here's the intro paragraph so you can see this is where it shows up here and if you don't have any of that information with you right now it's fine we can go back and edit this um, at a later time, but here I just put some intro intro paragraph um, The Nicholas core real estate Group provi uh, Providing Outstanding service to the metro Atlanta area You can go whatever you want there. I'm just trying to you know fill in some text for for today's Call. So you can see how it automatically updates there. So you can see how um, all of your copy works. Now we have um, these two different sections. So you could set this up however you want. Um, to me, the most simple way to set up these two different sections is this could be a uh, headline could be uh, working with sellers and headline two could be working with buyers and then just a quick little description about each one we sell homes very quickly and then paragraph two um, we get buyers amazing deals on their dream homes perfect and now we have the opportunity to put images here so again if you whatever kind of marketing images that you have and then you have the rights to use I recommend um, using that so let's click on upload here and I have a couple images um, that I've saved on my computer so let me just let's do use this one which set image so now I've uploaded that image super quick I don't think it was actually 360 by 360, but it works. And then I'll upload another one for my buyer's paragraph. Set image. Perfect. So you can see how easy this is. The Kelly Guide really walks you through step by step and makes this almost foolproof. Just fill in the information as you go along. And then uh, footer headline. So you do want to fill this in. So uh, Nicholas Core Real Estate Group. Serving the Atlanta area. Paragraph, um, reach out today to learn how Nicholas Core Real Estate Group can help you with, with all of your real estate needs. You put in whatever you'd like there. All right, so now we've gone, we set up the entire company profile page. So we'll click on continue to go to the about page. So again, all this information is gonna be pulled in from our marketing profile. Again, at the top, 
you can see our navigation. So if we wanted to switch this up, we could. So we have the page title. So it's going to page title is going to default to about me, but I, I've already updated this to be about Nicholas core. So I can about Nicholas core uh, URL slug. It will default to about dash me, but I'd updated previously to about not Nicholas. Uh, but I could change that to about.nic. And then SEO description, you can see here, I put about Nicholas Core realtor with Keller Williams first Atlanta, and then I would add my phone number. So way, if someone wanted to call me directly from the Google search results, my phone number would be there. And then we'll click on content. So page title about Nicholas Core, your title realtor at Nicholas Core Real Estate Group. Bio title right here about Nicholas, just put about Nicholas Core. And then here's my bio that pulled in from my marketing profile. And then we can see here, contact title. You can change this, it says, I think it defaults to contact me, but you can put contact, you know, your name. Phone number here, it pulls it in without the dashes which is fine because you can see it adds the dashes over here and then contact email. Pretty simple. Click on continue. And now we have the contact us page. So again, at the top, the navigation we can see here, this is going to be the third page from the top on the uh, live navigation. We'll click on search engine optimization. So page title, Contact us. I could update this to contact Nicholas Core Real Estate Group. URL slug, just leave it as contact, SEO description, um, contact Nicholas Core Real Estate Group with Keller Williams First Atlanta and my phone number. And then contact content. So page header, I'm gonna update this to contact Nicholas Core Real Estate Group. Um, reach out to Nicholas Core to get started with all, to get started finding your new dream home. And you can see here we have a box that says message hint. And this is the grayed out text here. This is just some text that you can put there that it kind of lets people know, hey, start typing in this box and let me know what you're looking to do, buy or sell, when you're looking to do this, what area, what's your budget, just some key pieces of information that you would want a potential client to, to share with you uh, to get started on the real estate transaction. And then phone number, you can see here, um, it, it doesn't include the dashes on the bottom, so I'm going to add those there, and then email. And then click save and continue. So now you can see that was really easy to set up our agent website. So we've gone through the Kelly guide. So once you're done, it'll put you um, in this website. So if you have a bunch of questions, you can go to the site's FAQ uh, and get some answers there. You can go to the site settings so we can manage all of our sites here. And then if you wanna create some more, click on this as well. So I am just gonna click on the X up here, in the top right hand corner, and this is gonna drop me back into command. So I'm gonna come over to my agent site. You can see here, these are all the websites that we just created. The contact us, about us, company profile. So you can see here, uh, with those June 23rd dates. Now, because I've gone through the Kelly Guide a couple times, I do have a couple iterations of these websites. Now, to see your live site, you can click on the URL here in this uh, blue toolbar. So you can see, find your dream home. The website is very simple. As Mike has mentioned numerous times in team meeting, these, our new agent websites are really to be all about that search experience for our clients. So when they come to our websites, the first thing they're gonna notice is the ability to search for their home. We're really trying to provide that same level of service that they find from Zillow or Realtor.com or any of the other, other um, home search websites. 
And then up here, uh, you can click on Nicholas Core on your name, Nicholas Core Real Estate Group here, and then you can see all the web pages that I've created. So I have a, a couple iterations here um, since I have done this a handful of times. So contact Nicholas Core Real Estate Group, reach out to, to Nicholas Core to get started on finding your dream home. So that is your agent website, but we're not done. So let's say you just went through the Kelly guide, you finished this and you're like, you know what? I, I want to go back and I want to edit some of that text. I, I have a new bio that I want to use or um, I don't know, whatever you want to do. You would think that you would come here to the agent site pages and you click on these three dots and it'll give you the option to edit here. Unfortunately, it doesn't. It only gives you the option to delete that web page. If you want to update any of the web pages that you just created in the Kelly Guide, you do that in the Designs applet of Command. So to do that, we'll come over here to the left-hand side and we'll click on Designs. And this is going to um, show all the designs that we've created to help sort through um, all the other flyers and everything we've created. We'll click on agent site up here in the top, top right hand corner. And this is gonna show us all of the pages that are just uh, websites that we've created. So you can see here also it says company profile, updated June 23rd, 2020. So I know that's the website that I created today. So if I wanna, if I want to edit this, just click on it. Theoretically, you would just click on it and it would open up. Let me try to refresh here. Agent site. Well, this is fun. Well, it's not letting me open any of these. So, um, what you would do is you would open, you'd click on. Um, Oh, here we go. Now it's opening. Sorry, I was just being impatient. So you can see here when you open it up in the designs applet, uh, it puts us into the page builder um, tool that we have here with all the widgets. So I can go through here and I can edit any of these. I can add widgets over here on the right-hand side if I wanted to. We have content blocks. So if you wanna add buttons, dividers, images, text, layout blocks, different grids. You can go through here and you could customize this any which way that you want to. So if you wanted to edit the information that is already in here, let's say I don't really want to go through and um, make a ton of changes. All you would do is you'd click on the configure widget button down here and this would take us through the company profile widget that we've already set up. So headline, company profile, um, intro text, I could change the header image if I wanted to right here. So if I didn't want to use the image of the rooftops, um, let's say, you know, working with sellers, I don't want to, I want to update that. So we can make this um, selling homes at top dollar. We sell homes quickly and get the most money for our clients. So you can just edit all that information, working with buyers. I'm okay with this. So you can just see how easy it is to come through here and make any, any changes to it. And then I'll click save and apply. And I'll sc scroll over here. You can see selling homes at top dollar. Oh, misspelled that. So let's edit that. Let's delete that S and click save and apply. Perfect, selling homes at top dollar. We sell homes very quickly and get the most for money for our clients. So that's all you have to do if you wanna change your website. So click save and apply and then save changes. Yes, I would like to make this visible to other people. Now, you'll notice that the company profile page right here doesn't show um, as a highlighted preview image because I made that update, I need to go through uh, and actually re-add it to the web page. 
which seems kind of counterintuitive, but it's, it's just um, a double check to make sure that any edits you make to your website are intentional uh, and that you add them only when you are ready for uh, the internet to see them. So to go through and add my updated company profile to my website, we'll click on site and app settings. And then over here, we'll click on the right for site pages. And so this was a company profile page. So this is the about Nicholas core real estate group. So I will click on the three dots here and click select page. And this will give me the option to select um, of the pages that I've created, which one I want to use. So I'm going to select the company profile page created on June 23rd. And then Wait, I- Can you go back, sorry. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to follow along. So can you go back to the beginning of that part? You said that once you edit it in designs, then it's like not a live page. So can you go back to just the beginning of that? Yeah. So. Okay. So as soon as you are make your edits to uh, your page and you click save, command okay. is gonna put you back here in your agent site pages applet. Okay. And then over here, when I look at the company profile page that I just updated, it lets me know here that this is not an active sub page, so I can't preview it. I have mine, to- I, Mine doesn't say anything about, like all my dates created are back in February. Did you go through and create and play with the Kelly guide back in February. Yeah. That's probably why. But if you went back through the Kelly guide now, um, or if you deleted them and then went back through, it'd recreate them. But you can just edit all of them in the designs applet. Okay, so if I just, I followed through, I did the Kelly guide with you, and then I went into the designs and like edited something else in there. How do I know which page it was? It will, um, it has the date change, it'll have a date here. Also, one thing I would recommend is when you are making changes to it, which I guess I could have showed you. So if I come back to designs, um, let's click on this. So let's change our company profile page. It's loading. You could change the name of it. So I could change the name to six um, company profile, six, 23, 2020. So I changed the name, but I'm not seeing that name in the agent site pages list. All right, so let me hit save here. So it's not showing like the mine just did where it's now shows company profile 623-2020. Are oh. you in agent site pages or landing pages? Agent site pages. Maybe give uh, the page a refresh. No, it's okay. Okay. Well, we can touch base after this to figure out why that's not loading because it should it should be here. So once you've made your update to your site, over here it shows that this is not an active subpage. So we actually have to go through and add it to um, the active website. So to do that, we'll click on site and app settings up here in the top right hand corner. And then we'll click on site pages. And then we have all of the pages that we've added to our website here. So this is about Nicholas Core Real Estate Group because this is a company profile. So I'll click on these three dots right here and then click on select page. And this pop-up will show me all of the web pages that I've created and I can pick which website or which pages I've created. Do I want to be linked to the about Nicholas Core Real Estate Group? So I'm gonna select the company profile 623-2020 that I just created and then click continue. So now if I come back to my website, let me just come home, let me give it a refresh. I come up here to the drop down menu, Nicholas Core Real Estate Group. I guess I selected the wrong one because I have <laughs> a lot of them here. Here we go. I think the internet's just being slow this morning. Let's go home. It's in here somewhere. This is, <laughs> well, it does upload and it does update, um, but it's not showing, so I apologize. Actually, let me just come over here. 
Let's do delete, click to confirm. Because I wonder if I delete that, let me do a refresh. Now let's click about Nicholas Core Real Estate Group. All right, well, it looks like it's pulling in the wrong one. Select page, company profile page, continue. Oh, let me click save page changes. I don't, I didn't click save page changes. Always have to click save page changes. It gets me every time because it's, it usually is right there out of sight on the screen. So I'll click that. So I'll come back to my live site, click on home. Let's do a quick refresh. Now, if I click on about Nicholas Core Real Estate Group, you can see here is the website that I just uh, made the updates to, selling homes at top dollar. We sell homes very quickly and for the, get the most money for our clients. So now it shows properly. So any questions on creating the website, editing and adding it to um, the live site? All right. So in our site and app settings portion of the consumer applet, there's a couple things I wanna walk through. So I did mention um, as we were going through the Kelly guide, there's a couple places that you can make edits to your website. So here, um, when you click on site and app settings, it's going to drop you to the general tab and we'll just kind of walk through each one of these tabs uh, really quickly. So the general tab, the general settings. So here we have that agent site hero text. So remember I updated it to find your dream home. I, let's say I just, you know, I want it to be, you know, find your dream or okay, start your home search here. I can make that, that change. And then if you wanted to add a hero image here or you wanted to remove one, that's I just really dislike this one of the house. Just click delete. Perfect. Then we'll scroll down. We have our download our app landing page. So this is with our app, there's a URL and this is gonna be the text that appears on it. I'll show you in just a moment. So download my app to find your new home anywhere. This is going to be the default text, but you can change it if you'd like. Virtual tours. So this is new with COVID-19, they've added um, adding a virtual tour. So if you want it, if you have a virtual tour, or you are a, um, a YouTube um, tour of a home, you can add that here. So if you want to just click on select listing and then you could select your listing here, click confirm. And then you type in the URL here. So if you uploaded it to uh, YouTube, you could put it here. And this way it'll connect that virtual tour to your listing. And I'll show you how we can add um, feature listings on our website in just a moment. So then just click add tour. So once you're done making those changes, make sure you click save changes in the bottom left hand corner. And it'll let you know that they were saved. And again, you can come back here to edit this, this text here, any of the images that you would like. The next tab is URLs. And there's two URLs that we can adjust here. So the first one's gonna be the domain settings. So you'll, it'll default and it's going to be on the .kw.com domain. To the right, there is an option for a custom domain, but you can see that when I try to click on it, it doesn't allow me to. As I was mentioning earlier, we are unable to use a vanity URL or a custom do domain at the moment for our websites. So if you say, like I own nicholascore.com, but I can't use nicholascore.com um, to, to send traffic uh, to my website. So at the moment, I'm still gonna continue to use nicholascore.kw.com. Now there is a workaround with that. You can forward people to, uh, your KW site. So for, if someone types in nicholascore.com, it forwards them automatically to nicholascore.kw.com and they don't even realize it. We can set up some time afterwards if you'd like to walk through how to set up forwarding for your website until we do have the ability to uh, use custom domains. 
The next is our app URL. You can't really change this here, um, but this is the link that you would share with someone um, if you wanted them to download your app or one way that you could download it. So you could, I'm just gonna click copy here and then I wanna show you what um, this looks like. Accept cookies. So you can see this is just um, a default page, curious about what's trending in your neighborhood. Download our app for real estate insights on demand. And this is just, um, just a quick little landing page um, about the app that you can share. And so our clients can download here uh, from the App Store or Google Play, or they can type in their phone number uh, and they'll get a link directly to download the app. All right, so the next tab is featured listings. So one thing um, that a lot of agents were frustrated with when the agent websites came out was that we didn't have the ability to have featured listings on our home pages. On the Playstore website, you could select your listings. So that way when someone went to your website, so when someone went to nicholasscore.com, they would see all of my listings right there on the home page. And that's one of the benefits of working with me as an agent and one of the benefits of working with you as an agent is that you have uh, the ability to really highlight the, your client's listings. Labs listen, and we do now, we now have the ability to have featured listings. So to do, do that, we'll get started here. We'll just, the headline, um, let's do Atlanta's hottest listings. All right, and now we'll select the listings. And it's gonna only show you your listings. So you can't go through here and add um, anyone else's listings and try to claim them as your own. So these are my two active listings. So I'll click select, done, perfect. And then click save changes. So these featured listings should now appear on my home site, on my home page. So let's do core.kw.com. Featured listings right there. So the featured listings won't show up until you uh, save them. But this way, when someone goes to your, your website, perfect. And you can see it also includes an open house, so I'd schedule that. So it shows that right there, perfect, open house. And we just did a $15,000 price reduction here, so people will be able to see, oh, okay, there is a uh, reduced price on this home. So if you know anyone that wants to move to Smyrna, we have a beautiful listing. Come be my neighbor. So that's how you add feature listings. The next tab is theme. So this is what we walked through earlier, which really comes down to just kind of selecting the difference between the red KW and the, the black KW. If you want to change it anytime here, you can. Um, I still prefer the red one, but whatever's best for you. And then the last tab is site pages. So we were just here a moment ago, but site pages is where you're going to manage all of the sites that you have um, and all the pages that are included on your website. So um, back on, I'll just quickly show you here. Um, on the Placer website, we used to have a toolbar that had all the different um, sub pages that you could click on very easily. On our new agent website, everything is included in this drop down. So you can see the pages here. The site pages setting, the site page settings part of um, the tab here is where we manage all of those drop down menus. So I can click here. I'm going to delete the blog one. So I'll click to confirm that. Uh, but let's say um, I want to uh, adjust the page title here so I can um, change this to about Nichols Core Real Estate Group is really long. So let's just change this to N K R E G. Perfect. Click save changes. And now when that, you click on that drop down menu, uh, it'll show about NKREG. Let's delete this one here because this is redundant. Perfect. I'll come back over to my website. Let me just click home and then refresh. And then I click on my drop down and you can see it updated to about NKREG and just has about Nicholas Core and contact Nicholas Core Real Estate Group. So that's, that's how you edit 
all the sites that are included in that drop down are going to be in the site page settings. And this is where we can also add pages. So if you want to create a, um, a specific site or a specific page, you would add it here and you would click add page. You would select your new page or you could create one here, which we're going to do in just a moment. And you'd go through the process that way. Any questions about um, the site and app settings? Just remember that when you're in the consumer applet, it's always going to be over here on the, on the top right hand side and that's where you find it. Now, let's say you want to create um, a website or a specific page, sorry, to be on your website. A lot of questions, a lot of people have asked me about blogs. There still is not the blog feature within our agent site yet, like there was in Playster. It is a work in progress. Labs is working on it. They've taken that feedback. But in the meantime, there is a little bit of a workaround if you want to create a blog site. And I can show you how to do that and show you how to create a new site. So if you want to create um, a new site, click on the Create a New Site button in the top right-hand corner. And then here we're going to select on my agent site. You have to select on my agent site for you for it to have the ability to be connected to your agent site. If you click as a standalone as a standalone page, you'll never be able to connect the two and you'll have to redo all your work again. So we'll select on my agent site, click create page. And this is going to put us into the page uh, builder applet. So I'm going to rename my page. I always recommend everything in command when you're working here. Start at the top of the page and just work your way down. So we'll start at the top here and we'll give this a, um, a title. So I'm just gonna name this blog 623 2020. I like to put dates in titles of things. For me, it just helps keep track. So if I ever create a new blog page, I know it's gonna be um, the one I wanna use because it'll have a newer date. So for here, we need to click on to add a widget. So we'll just come over here. Um, we'll do the, actually, you know what? Let's do this. I'm gonna show you real quick where to get the information from and then we'll come back over here because there's two ways that we can do this. So for creating the blog today, we're gonna use the Homekeeper blog. All KW agents should have a login for Homekeeper as a part of our monthly dues. And you can actually pull in all of the blogs that they create and then make it make it look like you have your own blog. So to do that, I'm going to go to Home Keeper. All right. And I'm going to log in as a realtor. And then log in. Perfect. So you can see here on the dashboard, they have two widgets over here on the right hand side. So I'll just click on embed widgets and they have the first one is my trusted pros widget and the next is my blog widget. We're going to use iframe. Oh, if I scroll down here, you can see um, what the preview of the blog page looks like. So you can see here looking for more space and they update this about once a week. So as people come to your website, it would look like you're regularly updating it. We're going to use iframe and the reason that's important is an iframe basically is um, code that will load another web page within a web page. So the way that it, when a client is on your website, they won't know that, but it's basically loading all this content from Homekeeper, but making it look like it's on nicholascore.kw.com. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy the code for the iframe widget. And I'll come back over here to command. Now, one of the cool things about command is that you can copy code into any text field within the page builder. So if I wanted to, I could just come over here, I'm go to content blocks and I can just grab text, put that here and then paste. Let's give it a second and it will load. See? And now you can see it loads um, the entire um, blog widget there. 
Now, one thing to keep in mind when you are creating a, webs uh, a page within command, you have to have at least one widget. So if you decided that you wanted to um, just use the text box, you could come down here uh, and use the, I always recommend the, the contact me form. So you can just put that down there, perfect. So now you can configure widgets, done. And you can hit save changes. If you don't have a widget and you haven't configured it, the save changes button up here will not be illuminated. All right, so let me get my charger ready. My computer's about to die in just a moment. Now, to be honest with you, I don't really like the way that this looks. I think this kind of looks a little messy. So let me show you a better way um, that we can. Wait, I have a question. Yeah. How did you, so I've never logged into HomeKeeper before. So when I went to go log in, I created an account, but now it's asking for um, like how I want to pay. So you should have, I would recommend just saying for, you forgot your password. Oh, okay. You should, you should have one with your Keller Williams uh, email address. Mm. Okay, let's try again. So I'm going to delete um, both these widgets because as I mentioned earlier, you can put code into any text field in, uh, the, in the page builder. So I'm gonna use the agent profile widget because I think it looks nice and we're able to um, configure it to look purposeful. And it has the, the widget so we kill two birds with one stone. So I pulled over the widget. I have, need to go through and configure it. So I'm gonna come over here to configure widgets. Oh, this is not, okay, this is not the one that I wanted. Let me configure widgets. Okay. Contact. All right, perfect. Let me come back over here. Agent profile. All right. It should. You know what? Okay, this is being weird, so I'm just going to click out of here. I'm going to start over again. Let me click create new site on my agent site. To be honest, sometimes command is a little tricky and it doesn't always work um, as expected. So be patient, but this is one of the joys of live training. So I just rename the site. I'm gonna pull over the agent profile widget. Perfect, so now you can see it kind of auto-populates all of the information um, from uh, my marketing profile. So now I'll come over here to configure widgets, click on agent profile. So this is gonna be um, my blog page. So I don't wanna use my image, my headshot. So I'll change that. So I'll just click on this little image here. And then I'm gonna select just one of my standard images. If you have anything here um, that represents a blog or a logo or anything you can, uh, you can put that here. And then we'll page title. So rather here, um, let's update this to latest real estate news company profile. Actually, no, let's rename this. Oh, sorry. Uh, this will be, our page title will be blog. And then bio title would be latest real estate news. Role and company, um, stay up to date with everything with, let's do the Atlanta real estate market. All right, so bio, so we'll wanna delete the bio here. And here's where I recommend you paste in that code. So we'll come back over here to the my blog widget iframe, copy code, come back over here, into our page builder, and then I'm gonna paste that code into the agent bio, all right? And then the contact down here, we can leave that as is, and I'm gonna click save and apply. And now you can see it updates. Oh, here's my image for my blog. It says blog, stay up to date with the Atlanta real estate market. And then it pulls in all of the blogs from the HomeKeeper app. And you can kind of scroll within here. 
But the one thing I like about using the agent profile widget is that it keeps it all contained. It ha it's you know framed with these nice gray bars on either side. And at the bottom, it has our contact information. So to me, this just looks like a, a fully realized web page rather than just using um, a text field. So I'm gonna click Save Pages. Yes, I would like to make this visible to others. Perfect, so you can see here is the blog page I just created and it is not live yet. So that's where I need to go back into Site and App Settings. And I'm gonna click on Site Pages and I'm gonna add a page. So I'll click on add page here. I'm gonna select blog, the page I just created now, and I'll click continue. And then I'm gonna name this, um, we'll do, yeah, uh, blog URL slugs, we'll name it blog. Uh, Nicholas, for the SEO description, so this is what we wanna put in so it helps rank the page, but also provides a quick description in the search results. Nicholas Core Real Estate Group blog. Stay up to date on the latest news for the Atlanta real estate market. And then as always, click Save Page Changes. Settings are updated successfully. I'll come back to my website. Actually, let me come home first. Let me come home, refresh. And now the blog has been added. So I went to the drop down. So I click on the blog. And this is what it looks like. So you can see here. And then they can scroll through here and read all the different blogs. Now, if they click on it, it's going to open a new page and it'll take them to the Homekeeper blog. But it still looks like I wrote it because I set up my profile and I guess it still has me at Cityside, so I probably should update that. Um, but it's just a great way that you can um, pretend like you have a blog since we don't yet have the blog feature. So I had a couple questions, so let me answer these real fast. Um, is Homekeeper specific to Atlanta? No, it's not. So it is nationwide. Um, so I guess theoretically, I probably shouldn't put stay up to date um, with the Atlanta market since that would be a little bit misleading. But um, you can say up to date with what's going on in real estate news or anything like that um, as your description for the website. So that is a way that you can create a blog Another thing that we don't, that we're missing, um, let me just close these real fast, is we don't really have the, a way to create like an, an open house page or um, something like that. So I wanna show you really quickly how to, you can create your own open house page. And this is kind of maybe a little like 2.0-ish, but I, it's a great way that you can start to um, really get creative with the pages that you want to make for your website. As I mentioned earlier, command can use code um, to basically load in information from other pages and add it to um, our site. So I wanna create an open house page um, for my listing. So let me come up here and I'm gonna pull all the information directly from my website because um, it's just easier that way. Um, so I hear, here is my listing here, so I'm gonna come Click on this. Perfect. So I'm just going to have this information here. Why? That shows Keller Williams Realty Barrow Jackson. Well, that is incorrect. But um, I'm just going to leave this here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to another website. Um, I'm going to search code, or let me just type in HTML code. I guess we do code gener generator. Perfect. So I'm going to click on this. Actually, let me try this one. Perfect, so this is the one that I want. Open, oh, nope. They've updated this, so we'll come over here to editor, to HTML editor. 
Now, it's, well, this has a lot of stuff here. Let's get rid of all this. Um, let's do control. Perfect. So I just did um, command all and I deleted it. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of create a page, a website in this HTML editor and then load that into command. So I wanna create an open house page because I'm gonna have an open house this Sunday for my listing. So to get started, we'll come over here and we're gonna select a table and we'll have a table and we'll just select a one cell table. I'm gonna add that there, perfect. And then I can click, let me click on, actually, let me come right here, table properties. So you'll see here width. What we wanna do is we wanna change width to 75%. And then we can leave height, we'll just leave that. Um, border alignment, we want this to be center aligned. So what by doing it as a percentage, depending on the, uh, the device that the consumer is using when they're looking at this page, so whether it's a, a computer, a phone, or a tablet, by selecting 75%, it'll make sure that the images and content always stay within 75% of that browser. So I'll click on OK. You can see here now it is aligned 75%. So let's start. We can start here by typing in uh, open house. We don't want a membership, but thank you. Uh, I'm gonna type open house. And I want to make this center aligned. Why is this not? There we go, perfect. And then format. Let's do, this we can do, where's the text? Here we go, let's do heading one. So we can select this, and then, where'd that go? Eh, whatever. All right, well that wasn't working very well. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna add an image. So I'm gonna come back over here to my website where I have my listing and I'm gonna right mouse click on this image and I'm going to, um, let's see. Saved to, um, usually it has a, gives me the option to, let me just, uh, sorry, let me click on the image and then I'll click copy image address. And then I can come back over here to my et page editor and I'll click on image here. So insert edit image. I'll select source, I'll paste that in there. And now it's going to give me these uh, dimensions. I'm just gonna delete them and I'm going to just put in 100%. And I'm gonna cl click on con click off of constraint portions. So by clicking on 100%, it's going to make sure that my image is the full width of this cell. So I'll click OK. And there we go. It loads my image. So now I want to click in here. All right. So now I can type in the address. So I'll put 3354 Dunn Street Southeast. Smyrna GA30080. Now, what I want to do is I want to make this a link so that way someone can click on it. So, what I'll do is I'll come back over here. I will highlight the URL from my website because when so I want someone to click on, um, if they're going to click on the listing, I want them to go to the listing on my website. I want them to stay in this environment. So, I'll come back over here to the page editor. I will select this. And then I'm gonna add insert edit link. And I'll paste that in there. Target, select new window. Now, because this is HTML code, if you didn't select a new window, it would read it would load the new page within the page, and it just gets really confusing. So we don't want people to know that we're this is kind of um, an HTML page. So we'll click on target new window and click OK. Perfect. So you can see that is a URL, and then this, I guess, is gonna keep popping up. 
Um, and then below that, let's add the property description. I'll just come over here. And I'll just copy all of the property description. And then, all right, I guess only copy part of it. But... And then to make this look uh, nice, in my opinion, we will justify it so it does the whole width of the page. All right. And then we could add, you know, contact Nicholas Kaur at Keller Williams First Atlanta, 404-414-8238 and 404-531-5700. Perfect. So I guess that, you know, what I could do here, I could um, do open house. Let's do Sunday, June 28th from 2 to 4 p.m. Perfect. So now I've kind of created my little web, my little page here has all the information. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into command and I'm going to click on agent site pages, create a new site on my agent site and hit create page. Now I want this to load as a normal page. So before I used um, a widget, the, the agent profile widget, but I'm not gonna do that this time. So first let me get started by giving this a name. So this will be um, Dunn Street Open House. And I'm going to use um, a content block. I'm just going to use the text here. So I'll put the text box there. Then I'll come back to my HTML gener generator page. And I'm going to select all of the code on the right hand side. And I'm just going to copy that. Come back into that. Uh, come back into command. Paste that in there. Ah. Oh goodness, let me just, well, messed that up, so let me do it again. <laughs> uh, let me add a text box, come over here, paste it in, and now you can see it loads in the information. Now it looks kind of wonky, which is fine. Let me just delete this. Perfect, so now it's kind of, it looks a little wonky, but I promise it'll show properly. Now you'll notice up here in the right hand corner, it doesn't give me the option to save pages, save changes because I have to um, add a widget. So for this widget, I'm just gonna do the download my app widget and then I'll just drag that to the bottom and that should have loaded. So I'll click on configure widgets, download my app. Oh, it. Oh, yeah, put that at the top. So let's not do that. We don't want this at the top. We want to move this down. Why is this being weird? Let me just delete this then. Oh my goodness gracious, what is happening? All right, so let me come over here. I'm going to download, drag download my app. Did it put it at the top again? I don't know why this is happening. There we go. Perfect. So now it's on the bottom. Configure widgets, done. Now I'm going to click save changes. Yes, I would like to make this visible to others. Perfect. So you can see here, Dunn Street, but it's not live yet. So I'm going to come to site and app settings site pages, add page, select Dunn Street Open House. Open House, and then open URL slug, I'll just name this Open House. Uh, open House, Sunday, 628 from 2 to 4 p.m. at 3354 Dunn Street, Southeast. Smyrna, Georgia 3008L. And then click Save Page Changes. 
pages updates were successful, come back over here to my actual page. Let me click home, refresh. Then here we have our open house. Perfect. Okay, well, I guess it did look like a little wonky, but you can see here how it has all the information. So it's just a great way um, that if you wanted to create another website, it didn't work properly because I was clicking around and messing with it, but you can get the idea of how you can do it. If you ever wanted to create a website like this, um, kind of in an HTML editor, let me know. We can set up some time to walk through it. Some way you can have a cool little open house site. Any questions on creating the blog or um, open house site before I move into landing pages and then our app? All right, so next thing we're gonna talk through is landing pages. Landing pages are different than the agent site pages because landing pages are gonna be for just more one-off things. Um, so if you, if you do wanna have an, you know, an open house or you wanna create a landing page for a specific listing uh, that you can share on social media, or if you are gonna run an ad, I always recommend using um, a landing page for that. Question? Uh, would you delete it or just click not visible? Uh, so for the open house page that I just made that was being wonky, I would just delete it and, and start over and pull in um, the text again. So I'm going to walk through creating a, uh, a landing page with you. So in the landing pages part of the consumer applet, we'll click on create a new site. And then here we'll select as a standalone page and click create page. And it's gonna put us into the same uh, page builder that we were just in a moment ago. Oh, oh! after the, um, the question was, would you delete it or just make it not visible for the open house once it's over? Oh, I would just delete it once it's over, or you could just remove it from your web page. So if you wanted to have another open house the following Sunday, you can make some quick updates and then make it um, live again and visible afterwards. So for the landing page, um, we'll just, I always recommend whatever the, the, land, the listing is, so I'll do 3354 Dunn Street, and I'll put um, TC04 landing page. Just that way I can keep track of it. All right, so very similar to what we were just a moment ago with a lot of widgets. So we can just kind of pull them over and create the page as um, we want. I have um, a recommended format for this, for what I like to do. I always start with the branded header. So just drag that over first, and you can see it preloads most of the information from our marketing profile. Then we have um, our listing. So if you have a listing, I recommend pulling that over. You can see here, it's just gonna pull in a default listing um, a, a placeholder for Austin. We'll go through and we'll configure that and pull in your actual listing. So let's continue to scroll down. Here's a nice little map. Below the listing, I like to use the market snap. So I'm just going to drag that down. And what I like about the market snap is it provides some context and some details about the neighborhood. So they can see, oh, here's the listing, here's the images. Now I can learn more about the neighborhood, what's going on, what's the sales, what have they been like, what is the cost per square foot. So just, it makes you look like the market expert to uh, any visitor to your landing page. And then after that, I recommend using the lead form. So that way if someone's interested in this, pro <clears throat> in this property, they can submit a, uh, a question to you um, as, to get some more information. And then below that, I like to use the your local expert. So below there, this is just going to be a quick little bio and also includes a download my app button. So you don't have to use the whole download my app um, widget. And then below that, we will select on the legal footer. And that includes the, our social media links as well as the logo for First Atlanta and, and the contact information for First Atlanta. So you can just scroll up to kind of see everything, make sure you pulled everything over correctly. Now with um, a lot of agents doing virtual tours and uploading that to YouTube, 
you can add um, video to your landing page. So I created one, um, a video for myself. So I'm gonna pull that video widget over. Because I wanna show you in just a moment um, how to include that link. So we'll come over here to configure widgets. And then I always recommend to start at the top. So we'll start with branded header. So we'll do um, Smyrna's newest listing. All right, and then we'll just scroll down, double check the information um, that's pulled in from your marketing profile. Again, sometimes the phone number doesn't include the dashes, sometimes it does, let's double check it. Your team logo, you can click save and apply. And then you can see uh, how it updates here. Where would you place a landing page? So a landing page you can put on social media. So whenever you have a new listing that goes live, you can create a landing page and share this on social media and say, hey friends, check out my latest listing. And now there's a whole page dedicated to that one listing. That way you don't have to share a Zillow page or you don't have to share an FMLS page. Everything's branded to you. So if you get any leads that comes directly into your command. Another great place would be if you were doing an ad. So if you are doing an ad for your new listing or an ad for an open house, this could be the click through URL uh, for anyone that clicks on that ad. All right, so we've updated the branded header. The next is going to be the video. So um, we'll just update the information here. Headline, uh, take a tour of this home. I'm going to go to YouTube really quickly because I uploaded youtube.com. And then let me just come over here and do 186. Doo -doo -doo. Cherokee Reserve Circle. Perfect, here we go. So I'm just gonna copy this URL. Now, this is not the right listing um, for the actual one I'm gonna use, but it's fine. So I'll click video URL, and then click save and apply. Perfect, so now it loads the video right there. Use a description of the video. Um, I'll just put in the address here. Let's just do 3354 Dunn Street Southeast, Smyrna, GA 3080F, and click Save and Apply. Take a tour of the home, perfect. So now that we've added the video, we will go to select our listing. So we'll click on Browse Listings. And then we'll just type in property address, so 3354 Dunn Street, Southeast. Now, when you are creating your landing page, I recommend that you use the Georgia MLS listing. And the easiest way to tell the difference between a Georgia MLS and an FMLS listing is gonna be through the, the MLS number. So Georgia MLS is usually gonna be start with an eight, and FMLS is usually gonna be a five or a six. The reason I recommend using the Georgia MLS is because in FMLS, when you're typing in, um, when you're creating the listing and you're typing in the property description, it now gives us two boxes to fill in the property description. However, for whatever reason, when command is pulling in that listing information from FMLS, it doesn't recognize that second box of the property description as being the property description. So if you use FMLS, here the property description will be half empty and it looks incorrect and it doesn't make you look um, very smart as an agent. It makes you look like you forgot to finish your property description. So use the Georgia MLS one so it includes the entire property description. So click select. And now it'll give us the opportunity we can select any of the images from the listing for the header image. I'd recommend just the main default one which is probably why um, you selected that for your default listing image to begin with. And then click save and apply. So we'll just scroll down, you can see here, pulls in the listing, all the information about the property, the full listing description, and then a, a carousel of all the images, details and features, and a map. All right, so we'll go on to our next widget, which is the neighborhood uh, market insights. Now you do have the option here to put a header, to update the header text. I, 
I personally like the way that it has the neighborhood name here in black font and the neighborhood trends in blue font. If you update the header text, it makes everything black, so I'm not gonna touch it. So what you'll do here is you'll type in the zip code for your listing, and then the list of all the neighborhoods within that zip code, based on what's on next door, will appear. So scroll down. One thing you'll notice, they're not in alphabetical order. I don't know why. So I'll just click on Forest Hills, and then save and apply. So scroll down. You can see here's a little map of Forest Hills, and then here's uh, the stats about the neighborhood. So it just makes you look um, really smart as an agent that you are that local expert. And then we'll go on to the next widget, which is the lead form. Only thing you can edit here is the header. So if you have, if you want to say something other than interested, let's talk. You can. Next is going to be the uh, local market expert widget. So my headshot name team, role, license number, quick bio, phone number. You can see here the phone number has a little period. So, okay, I don't need to add the dashes, the email, and then the link to download my app. Now, for whatever reason, this didn't automatically load. So for the time being, because it, it's required, I'm just gonna put uh, google.com. Just so that way there's a URL in there. I can come back here in a little bit and edit that. But for the time being, I'm just gonna put a URL uh, placeholder and then legal footer. Nicholas Core Realtor with Keller Williams First Atlanta. Save and apply. Perfect, so I'll just scroll down here so you can see I made the updates. And then I'll do legal footer, make sure all that information is correct. Now here I'll wanna add the dashes and the phone number. Our address is all correct. Brokerage, save and apply. Perfect, so now you can see that the publish page icon is lit up, so I could publish this. Now, one thing I wanna do really quick because I am kind of um, nitpicky is I don't really like the way that this video takes up the entire screen, like it's huge. So I wanna edit it. If I, I want it to be smaller. So the way you do that is you would click on, well, come over here to the paintbrush select an element before selecting style manager. Why is this being weird now? Learn more. Well, traditionally, let me just click publish page real fast and I'll come back here and edit. <laughs> this is not letting me click on it. I'm gonna come here, click edit. So I wanna click on the video widget so you can see the video widget is highlighted. And I'll come over here to the paintbrush. Now it gives you some options to make some changes. So I'll click on dimensions over here. So it has a width and height uh, ratio. So what I can do here is I can edit the width of this and I can type in 100%. Or sorry, I wanna do, let's do 75%, sorry. 75%. And so it only edit, it only shows, um, uh, on the left-hand side, it's gonna to default to the left-hand margin. So knowing that this is only gonna show 20, 75%, I know there's 25% of the page uh, of blank space over here. So I wanna add a margin to the right-hand side. So I'm gonna do 12.5% and hit enter. Click on this. So the margin should be adding on the right hand side 12.5 percent and the left hand side we'll do 12.5 percent and now you can see it now centers that because I have that 25 percent of space is on either side so now this to me feels like a much more manageable size for my video widget so I'll click on publish page yes I want to make it visible perfect so now it puts me here on the list of all my landing pages. You can see this URL is like all sorts of wonky. It's pages.kw.com, Nicholas Corp, dash and numbers. But what are these just like random letters and numbers at the end? Well, we can make this um, more concise and purposeful. So we'll click on the three dots here and we can click change URL. Now that first part of the URL is gonna be the same for all of them. That lets command know that it's my URL but all this text here at the end can change. 
So I'll type in the property address, Dunn Street Southeast. Um, and then I'm going to make this TC04 training, just so I can distinguish it. And then I click Create. And you can see here it edit, it's edited to that updated URL. Now I want to look at uh, my landing page I just created. So I just click on the URL. And then you can see here, Smyrna's newest listing. And then here is the video that I added. I don't know why it's giving me an error. Uh, I need to scroll down. And then here's all the information. So you can share this with your clients as well and say, hey, look at this website that I just made specifically for your listing. Share this across your social media, share this with all your friends and family. And it's really impressive. And it literally just took just a few moments um, to make. And especially with virtual tours, adding that video feature, which for whatever reason isn't um, working right now uh, for my video, I think it's just a great way um, to really share all that information uh, and be uh, impressive as an agent. Any questions on creating landing pages? We'll jump into the mobile app in, ju in just a second. One thing I do want to say, um, when you create a landing page, and then you are going to use it for a paid campaign that you were going to run through command, you can select this landing page URL directly out of the campaign builder. You don't have to paste in a URL or anything. Everything's already loaded for you, so it makes it really easy. So another thing to keep in mind of um, how you can leverage these landing pages. All right, so the last thing we're gonna talk about today is the consumer app. And there's only so much that we can do um, within our mobile app, it is pretty set up for us. But one of the great things that is a part of this is our guide. So in your app, you can create guides for a seller and a buyer that your clients can use, and it can kind of help manage the process, set expectations. So when it's 1130 at night and they're like, oh, we just went under contact, what's our next step? They can refer to this guide, the seller's guide or the buyer's guide, um, and not have to reach out to you for every single thing that they uh, have questions about. So to do that in the consumer applet, we'll click on page, or sorry, guide builder. It's the third icon in third tab. And you can see here we have a buying guide and a seller's guide. These come already um, set up with the fault information. So you can go ahead and start sharing your app today and it's great, but you can go through here and customize this information. So let's start with the buyer's guide. So I'm gonna click on the pencil. Anytime you see a pencil in command that lets you know that you can edit that information. So I'll click on the pencil. And you can see here, this is exactly what the buyer's guide looks like. This is what it looks like in the app. Start your search, get pre-approved, tour your homes, make an offer. Well, we want to make some edits. So if we want to edit, you just click on it, click on the card you want to edit. And you can see here, you can change the image. So if you wanted to change the image, you just click on it, click here to update your image. And I don't think you can see it, but um, the little um, box, uh, search box from my computer and I just click open. And now I just updated that image. Perfect. You can update your the car title, start your search here, start your search now, whatever. And then you can update the subtitle and the subtitle is gonna be just the information that shows up in the guide. It is a limited number of characters, but then below you have the workspace text and you can add a ton of text here. So basically as much as you want. Because once they click into this card, they can see all the text. So you can make all of those edits there. I'm just going to click X here so I don't save those changes. Now, one thing I thought was a really great recommendation was that you can put in all of your preferred partner's information in this guide. So let's say get, get pre-approved. You can come down here, preview smart step workspace. Why is it not loading? Well, theoretically, um, I don't know why it's not showing. Let's try tour homes. That's very strange. 
I don't know why the get pre-approved is not allowing me to preview smart step. Actually, you know what? What if we change this? Whatever. I don't know why this isn't working. I'll come back and double check because there's a reason. But theoretically, what you could do um, for the get pre-approved, and I'll just use it in the tour of home tour homes um, guide step. You can just come down here and you could type in, um, you know, we could do um, Atlantic. Bay, put Devorah's information here, you know, her phone number, I don't know what her phone number is, but you could put in all of your preferred lenders information here. So in that way, you can say, hey, let's go ahead and get pre-qualified um, and all that information is in the app. Just click on it, boom, perfect right here. So I just, you know, Devorah at, boop, I could spell today, at Atlantic. Bay.com. I don't know what her actual email is, but perfect. You can put all of her contact information there. And it's just a great way that they always have that information with them at all times. Just something to keep in mind to simplify the process and makes you look really smart and really put together that you have your own app with all of your own information in here. And again, you could go through and add any other information that you want specific to any of these steps. Let me click X there. Let's say, um, you know what, Bef let's kind of reorder these because I want, you, I want my clients to get pre-qualified pre before we even start searching. So if you wanna rearrange the steps, you just click on the six dots here and then you can just drag it. Perfect. So we'll get pre-approved is gonna be our first step. Before anything else, let's go ahead and get pre-approved before we even start searching for homes because I know what's gonna happen is they're gonna see a home, they're gonna to wanna to go look at it, but we don't even know if they can afford it. So we'll make it pre-approved first. And then tour homes, make an offer. So again, if you just wanna um, rearrange them, just grab the six dots on the left-hand side. Oh, home inspection, perfect. So down here, you can come to um, the works, workspace text and you can type in um, your preferred inspectors, And then Spectre 1, Spectre 2, and put all that information directly in here. Now, you could obviously include it as an email, but just, hey, it's all in the app, so I recommend you go through. I included two inspectors. Um, there are two that I've worked with that are really great. Um, their contact information is in there. Perfect. Boom. There you go. So when you're done, you click Save Changes. And you would click Save Changes up here as well. Uh, and then, so then there's another tab of, of an introduction. And this is just a quick little paragraph um, explaining the guide to them. So you can update any of this text as well. This is all um, preloaded for you. So you can, you can update this to um, your guide to buying a new home. Actually, let's change this to buying your new home. Perfect. You can go through, make any edits here. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you make any changes here uh, in command to your buyer's guide or your seller's guide, it does take a little bit of time for that to load in the app. There's been some delays, so um, don't expect it to be immediate, but it should be probably within a day or two. Um, you may need to close out of the app altogether and reload it to make sure that that information uh, pulls in correctly. If you have any issues with it, let me know, um, or you can submit a support ticket and we can get that worked out for you because there has been some agents in the past that have made edits and then things didn't show up for a couple days or a week or so. All right, so I'm gonna click on back. I'm not gonna save any of those changes. And it's the same thing for the seller's guide. You can come in here, edit it. Um, I've already made a couple um, changes here. I start, you know, just made some edits with update disclosures. Um, add text here, um, yeah. Anything you wanna do, close. And you can add a step as well, so if you wanna add more steps, or if you wanna delete a step, and you can add another one, just click on add a step here. Any questions about updating the buyer's guide or seller's guide 
in the app. I imagine uh, most of you guys already have some type of processes set up that you follow and information that you share with your clients. This is just another great, point, another great place to share that information. So you can continue to do what you've done. You can have it on your website or as a part of your listing or buyer presentations. But here's just a great place that you can put it in your app and it's personalized so that way when your clients are using your app, this is your app, 100% yours. It looks like you made it yourself uh, and that way you're with them all the time. So just another great way to stand out um, and provide that, that next level of client service. So that's really the main thing that we can edit for um, the app within the app. To get your uh, app URL, I kind of showed you this earlier, you'd want to come to site and app settings. So if you want to send this to yourself or a client to download, and then you click site and app settings, and then click on URLs, and then come down here to our app URL. You can copy this. I'll come over here, paste that. So you can see here is my little image, so that way they know it's mine. Uh, and then I can come down here and I can send a text to myself to get the app. Now, what I would recommend is that you should have already added yourself as a contact in command. What I would recommend now is that you send yourself, if you haven't already, a link to download your own app. Because I'll show you there's an even easier way to share your app than having to send this to your client and then your client having to send a link to themselves and do all that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click send link. Success. So I'll click dismiss. And then hopefully, um, you've seen I've got a text that says here download the link, I'll click on it, and it takes me, um, it will take you to the app store to download. I already have a download, so it's going to um, open on my phone. So I apologize, there's not like a, an easier way to do this. So I'm just gonna kind of hold up my phone um, to, the, to the camera so you can see here. It's gonna default to the search screen. Now, what we just walked through in the guide is gonna be the middle icon. So if you download this, hopefully you can follow along. Oh, sorry, I just like breezed by one of the, the very important steps here. A little eager this morning, I apologize. So when you download the app, it's gonna have you log in or create an account. If this is your first time logging in, select create an account. And then you'll want to use the, the email address that you used for your personal contact in command. And that way it will connect the two accounts. So it'll connect your mobile app account to that contact card. So that way you can see uh, how uh, the consumers, when they're playing around in the app, how all that information appears in command. So create a new account, use your login, create a password. And then when you log in, it'll default to the search page. Now I wanna show you the um, guide that we just set up. So the middle button on the bottom toolbar is guide. So you click on that. And you can see here we have the buying guide Ooh. and the selling guide. So you can see selling guide I updated a couple of weeks ago. So all that information pulled over there has an image that I updated update disclosures. So you can click on it and then all the text there showing your home and all that information. Now, as your clients are going through the process, they can click on mark, step as completed. So if they've gotten their home already to show, they can click that show as completed and you'll be able to track their progress um, through command as well. I'm gonna click out of here. Now, one thing I wanted to show you um, that's important is right now, I've showed you how to use this URL to send to clients or yourself to download the app. What I would recommend is once you have the app already downloaded on your phone, you can share the app directly from your phone and it's gonna make it 10 times more easy to share. So we have a couple of questions, so let me answer these real fast. Um, when I add myself to command, would I use my personal email, not KW? I would recommend using your personal email address so, so there's no confusion. And then um, when I log into the app, would I use my personal email? Yes. 
is there a way to view the KW app from an agent view, first time using KW app? No. So there is not an agent view of the app. Um, the app is really only consumer facing, but I recommend that you have that you have the app on your on your phone because you can also use this, the app, when you're out and about and you're searching. So if they don't have it downloaded, you can say, oh, well, let me pull up my KW app because I have access to every MLS in the entire United States. So I have every listing here and you can pull it up and you can show them. And it also is a great way to have a conversation about it. But use your personal email address um, when setting up your own account. All right. So the easiest way to share your app is going to be from within the app itself. The reason you want to do this is because you'll notice that my app has my image there. It's connected to me um, as an agent. So myself as a consumer connected to myself as the agent. And you want to make sure that your clients are using your app. So everything they do is connected to your command and you have access to it. So on the bottom toolbar, there's a button on the far right that says more. If you click on that, a list of options will show up. The fourth one down says share the KW app. So let's say you're out and about with clients and they're like, oh, we want your KW app. Perfect, I'll share with you right now. You can click share the KW app and you have the option of sending a text message, email, whatever, so you can click on text message and then it pre-populates the, the code with the URL to download and you can just type in uh, your contact information there. So this is gonna be the easiest way that you can share your app with them, cut, cut down a lot of steps and make it um, more user-friendly for them. All right, I'm gonna cancel that. All right, the next is the search. So when you're in the app, they can search any which kind of way they want. They can search um, by price, address, um, they can draw. So over on the right hand side, they have the ability to draw. So very similar to what we've seen um, with some of the large um, uh, home search apps. So you can see I just searched in there. So now only that search area is highlighted. I can save the search. So right above the draw button, there's a little button that says save. So I can just click on that and I'll save it. And I can give it a name. So I'm going to name this. Um, Let's do TC04, let's do June 23rd. So I'm gonna save this search, click save, perfect. And now it lets me know it's saved. All right, so this is great and all um, as for the consumer so that they can come back to their saved searches. Down on the bottom of it, there's a little button that says save searches. And you can see here it says TCO for June 23rd. So they can come back and they can see every time that there's a new listing. That being said, how does this benefit you as the agent? Well, what you'll want to do is occasionally log into your consumer's contact card. So come over to contact. I'll search for myself. You'll see here is my name for myself. I have put myself in here a couple times, but the green check marks lets me know that I that this contact has downloaded the app, that there is a agent site connection. So I'll click on myself. Then I come over to timeline and you can see Nicholas Core created a saved search, TC04, June 23rd at 1145. I can click on this and it's gonna show me all of my saved searches. And I could go through here and make any edits, you know, I guess not since I didn't do this, but this way you now have access to everything that that um, client is doing. And if I were to go back into the search and say I clicked on a listing, clicked on it, I'm just like scrolling through really quickly. Um, I'm going to save it. I'm going to add to my favorites, click save. Perfect. So let's come back to timeline. Look, you can see, I just looked at this listing right here. Contact viewed Nicholas's favorites. Perfect. So now you have all of this data on exactly what your clients are doing in the mobile app. So let's say you're talking to some clients or some consumers that are not yet a client, like, yeah, you know, we're thinking about it. 
when you talk with them, hey, why don't you download my app? You can go through, you can search every MLS in the country. Everything is updated within minutes of it going live, so you have access to the most up-to-date data. No one's gonna try to spam you, and anytime you see a property, you can just let, it'll let me know, and we can set up a showing. Well then, you can kind of, every day or two, check their contact card, just come do a quick little refresh, and you're like, oh, okay, perfect, you were looking at 225 Sheridan Point in Atlanta. So you can send a text and say, hey, um, I got a notification you were looking at some homes that you favorited a few, any that you want to set up some showings. And now it looks like you are on top of it. You are, you are um, really going above and beyond and providing that customer service and everything you're doing is customer forward. So they're going to know that you are on top of it, you are diligent, and you, want to, you are there to provide them with the best real estate experience possible. So that is the mobile app. It is very simple. Um, and there are very few things that we as agents can edit because it really is all about the consumer. It's about making sure that they have the access to the most up-to-date data, that they can search any which way they want. They can save all those searches. And it's really to help get them off those the Zillow and the Realtor apps and put them on the KW app and really help connect um, and build that connection between them as clients and us as agents to provide um, really with that most updated market market information. Any questions about the app that I can answer for you or any questions about agent website or landing pages that I can help with? We still have 10 minutes, so I'm here to help any way that I can over the next couple minutes. All right. Well, if there are no questions, uh, I'm going to let you guys go a few minutes or, oh, Allie raised her hand. Allie, what question can I answer? You can unmute yourself and ask. Uh, here. All right, I will lower hand. Oh. I'm sorry, Nick. Should we yeah. delay? like the old consumer apps, like the Kelly and the KW that we set up a long time ago? So you do not need to download or delete Kelly. Keep Kelly on your phone because Kelly at the moment is our mobile interface for command. So Labs is working on a mobile platform for command um, and an app so that way it's gonna be kind of that a one-to-one -one experience what we have on our desktop. But right now, Kelly is what we use to get notifications of new leads, to be able to look up contact information while we're out and about. So keep that. In terms of the old KW app, it should automatically update to the new app. So if you try to download it, it should um, just say you already have it and try to up update it. So you don't need to delete it and then re-download. If you're having trouble with it, um, with the app updating to the new version, I recommend deleting it, but it should automatically update on its own. So I have it already then if I if I had already downloaded it? Yeah, you oh. should. Yeah, if you already had the if you had the old KW app. Uh-huh. Uh, and you've been updating your apps periodically over the last couple months since family reunion in February, it should have updated to the new app. Oh, so that's why I'm getting all the alerts and stuff. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> okay, thank you. You are welcome. Hi, Nick. I have a question as well regarding the KW app. Yep. So I went on ahead and signed in, created a profile. Um, now I went to where it says share, share the KW app. My yep. only concern is will it share with, because I had to set myself as an agent, would it share me as an agent or do the per or the client, do they have to select me as, an, as their um, agent? So when you are logged in and you are affiliated with an agent, so you're affiliated with yourself as the agent, and you share that app, it's going to share that affiliation. So it'll share, so when, to your client, it'll already have that app affiliated to yourself as the agent, which is the benefit of sharing directly from the app. So in that way your clients don't have to go through and sort your name and connect with you on the app. It's already done for them. Awesome, awesome, thank you. You're welcome.
Any other questions? All right. Well, as you guys are playing around with your, your agent sites, landing pages, and the mobile app, please let me know what questions you have, what I can help troubleshoot with you. I'm always here to help. You can either give me a call, text message, or email. We can set up some time. Um, but let me know how I can help you. And any other um, questions you have about command or DocuSign, let me know. I'm always here. Thank you guys for joining me this morning. I really appreciate it. Um, have a great rest of your day.